Hey, what's going on? We're going to paint some white. I hoped you liked the intro, but now we're going to move on to the painting. Now while you're watching this tutorial, I want you to keep a couple of things in mind. I'm using a very limited palette. I'm using, of course, white. I'm using yellow ochre, raw sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, and ultramarine violet or purple. And those are the only colors that I'm going to use, and those are the only colors that I'm really going to need. The other thing that I want you to keep in mind is the source of light. There is a bright yellow tungsten light above my still life. The light is going to factor in in my white still life, and we'll touch on that as we go along. One thing I wanted to bring up was that I forgot to use spray primer after my drawing. If I used spray primer, I would have been able to prevent the graphite from bleeding in to my white paint, which in a white still life, that's kind of a big deal. You'll see me try to counteract this by adding some intense yellow that was outside of my palette on the box, and it just did not look right, and I eventually had to paint over it. Let's move on to the cat. The cat is made of an earth material. He is natural. Because he is made of a natural mineral, he is impure, giving him his natural creamy color, which is what I use for his base color. My limited palette is mostly comprised of earth tones. The pigments in my paints are actually made out of earth and clay themselves and that helps me find that natural color. I want you to notice the difference between the cat and his surroundings, how he compares to the background and the box he sits on. The cat's yellow plaster body is different from the processed fibers of the box in many ways, like texture and color. I don't think I could finish off this tutorial without saying one of the most important things you can do when painting something white, or drawing something white especially, is that you need to pick out your darkest darks. That spot underneath the cat's belly is one of the darkest spots in my composition. If I forgot to put that there, the cat would seem very flat, especially with a low variety of color. I did totally forget to put on this little highlight on his snout there. Kind of makes him look like a flat-faced cat. Oh well. That's spaghetti. It's real cold outside. Meow. Spaghetti's a real cool guy. Hmm. Okay, let me get him a blanket. Nice, we've moved on to the rat, which to me is a much more interesting figure. Might not be as fun to paint, but conceptually he is much more fun. I'm painting him sort of a la prima here, just pulling him out of nothing. But let me talk about him for a little bit as I paint him. The rat is much more different than anything in this still life. The rat is some sort of abomination to nature. He's not natural. He's very artificial. He's some sort of polyethylene, plastic, bleached, artificial white. Which means the yellow tungsten light above him is almost solely influencing his shadows. Because the rat himself doesn't have any influence over his own color because he's so pure white, the contrasting color of the light reflected onto him is being projected in his shadows. While painting him, I'm going to be using my most artificial color, which is ultramarine violet, which is something to consider when painting artificial objects. Here you can see me building up the purple on the rat. All the while, I'm keeping a darker value brown around him. This separation of color and value divides the rat from the background, bringing him into the foreground and creating depth. Huh? What's in my jacket? Must be one of those rats. Huh? What do you want? I fed you your Cheerios. Will you go away if I give you an almond? Here. Now please, leave my family alone. God. We're gonna move over and paint this creepy, creepy girl. Man, she's, she's freaky looking. 
Anyway, she is much like the cat in that she is a creamy, earthy color. So I'm going to stick with my earth tones, but use more raw sienna and burnt umber because she is slightly warmer and darker than her cat. What I'm doing here, and something you might want to consider when you're painting white objects, depending on your medium, is you might not want to start off with an extreme. Start with a medium value color and work your way towards your lights and darks. You might find it much easier. Once I move on to her shadows, the girl's creamy hue has an influence over her shadow colors because she has a good amount of yellow in her figure, which will inspire me to use equal amounts of yellow and purple to paint her shadows. She is also the darkest part of my still life. Due to her being so close to the light, this causes her shadows to be quite harsh. Despite that, she is still a mostly white object, so I'm not going to be afraid to put a small amount of white in her shadows. Once I move into the light, I notice there is barely any pure white on her. Save for a few highlights on her hair, arms, and cheek, there is only off-white or high-value yellow on her. I finish off by pushing the background darker, outlining and helping her into her correct place in 3D space. Click on Hans to subscribe. Hans loves you a lot. Hans loves you when you subscribe. <laughs> Hans also likes it when you like the video because you learned something. All right, because you learned something for real. This wasn't something I like to do in school, you know, but when you get it, you're like, oh yeah. You, you just get it down, you know, you're like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, that's how it works, you know, it's, it's not that hard when you think about it, and if you, it, it's, you know, it goes by pretty fast, you know, I mean, it's just white, you know, anyway, I just concentrate on your value, your light source, and how it acts with your shadows, I mean, it's just like a blank slate, you know, and you gotta pick apart those colors. But value probably is the most important thing here. Hey! We're done. This is the white tutorial. This was the white tutorial. It's over now. <laughs> uh, this is getting way too long. Little Miss has been hanging out while I've been painting this. Say hello to the YouTubes, little miss. <laughs>